Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of trekking through compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Episode 3, Where No Man Has Gone Before. Air date, September 22, 1966. Directed by James Goldstein. Writer, Sam Peebles. In this episode, a Federation Starship Enterprise is on an exploratory mission to leave the galaxy. En route, a damaged ship recorder of the SS Valiant, an Earth spaceship lost 200 years earlier, is found. The record is incomplete, but it appears... The Valiant had been swept away from its path by a magnetic space storm, and the crew had frantically searched for information about extrasensory perception in the ship's library computer. The recording ends with the captain of the Valiant apparently giving a self-destruct order. Captain Kirk decides they need to know what happened to the Valiant, and the Enterprise crosses the edge of the galaxy. There it encounters a strange barrier which damages the ship's systems and warp drive, forcing a retreat. At the same time, nine crew members are killed, and both helmsman Gary Mitchell and ship psychiatrist Elizabeth Denner are knocked unconscious by the barrier's effects. When he awakens, Mitchell's eyes grow silver and he begins to display remarkable psychic powers. Mitchell becomes increasingly arrogant and hostile towards the crew, declaring that he has become godlike, enforcing his desires with fearsome displays of telepathic and telekinetic power. Science officer Spock comes to believe that the valiant crew members may have experienced the same phenomena and destroy the ship to keep this power from spreading. He advises Kirk that Mitchell may have to be killed before his powers developed further, but Kirk angrily disagrees. Alarmed that Mitchell may take over the Enterprise, Kirk decides to maroon him at an unmanned lithium-cracking facility on the remote planet Delta Vega. Once there, the landing party tries to confine Mitchell, but his powers have become too great. He kills navigator Lieutenant Kelso and escapes by knocking out Kirk and Spock, taking Dr. Danaher with him, who now has similar powers. Kirk follows and appeals to Dr. Denner's humanity for help. Both Mitchell, Before Mitchell can kill Kirk, the doctor attacks him and weakens him. Mitchell fatally injures Denner, but before he can recover from the effort, Kirk uses a phaser rifle to create a rock slide, killing Mitchell. Back on the Enterprise, Kirk makes a long log entry that both Denner and Mitchell gave their lives in the performance of duty. He explains to Spock that he wants his friend's service record to end positively, as he did not ask for what happened to him. So what are the compliance lessons to be learned from where no man has gone before? Well, first of all, let's start with root cause analysis. Obviously, a critical part of any best practices compliance program, reemphasized again in the Evaluation of Corporate Compliance Program's 2019 guidance released in April by the Department of Justice. But here we have uh, Kirk, Spock, and really the entire enterprise performing a root cause analysis to see what happened to the original uh, starship, the USS Fallon. Valiant. They ask questions. Of course, they can't interview people because no one is alive, but they ask questions and research and research and keep asking, why did something happen? Why did something happen? Why is the crew asking for information on ESP? Why is the crew seeking information on crew members who have ESP? Uh, The next stop is Dr. Denher, played by Sally Kellerman. You will remember her from the movie MASH. And she is there as a psychiatrist, psychologist to observe the crew under stress. And what's the compliance lesson from this? Well, uh, perhaps on the Enterprise, you can't prepare for uh, everything since you're on a five-year mission um, to explore the unknown. But in the compliance realm, you can train, and you can train employees uh, how to uh, react when they are faced with a ethical question a question about their values or the company's values, or even forced to um, 
face the issue of whether or not to pay a bribe. There's a great training series called How to Resist a Bribe, which gives employees specific tools, tactics, and techniques to utilize uh, when a uh, bribe is demanded uh, of them from a foreign government who is a customer or a state-owned enterprise. So training employees what to do in specific circumstances can have a powerful impact on what they do when faced with those circumstances. Dr. Danner's uh, observation of the crew under stress, uh, it might give you pause to think about what are your employees going to be like uh, under stress uh, when faced with this situation. And finally, um, the sort of overall theme about uh, super ESP oriented beings. And here I would really ask you to consider uh, the theme of the ESP oriented beings from this episode as a description of the other. And the theme runs through the entire show. Um, look at how Kirk reacts to these uh, ESP oriented beings. He certainly fears telepathy and telekinesis, um, and they are shown to be extremely dangerous to humans. From uh, a series point of view, I think this is something that we see really throughout the uh, entire original series, and generally once you obtain these powers, uh, it's difficult for you to go back to being a human. And uh, tying this all to a compliance program, I would ask you to consider the following. Certainly the maximum power corrupts is well known, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, um, early on in the um, episode, Gary Mitchell announces that he has godlike powers, and um, he has absolute powers, and he utilizes those throughout the show. From the compliance program perspective, though, this is the key for internal controls, because internal controls are there to, in one point, um, perform a trust but verify role, but they're also there uh, as a stop and think control, and they're also there as a stop control, because some controls you uh, have to get approval of others to override or have new or other information. So I would ask you to consider uh, the focus and purpose of your internal controls in your compliance program. I think it's a great way to think about this and a great way for you to consider the importance of internal controls Uh, to really having multiple roles in your compliance program. Hope you've enjoyed uh, this uh, discussion of where no man has gone before, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow for our next episode of Muds Women. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. 